You want to be in the right headspace when you're going into wedding planning. Weddings are expensive. There you go. That's your start. That's as much as you can do from the very beginning. I think that was our hardest part. That was definitely a priority for me. Try and make every decision as a team. You're probably going to upset some people. It's such an exciting, special time. Hi guys, welcome to another video. I'm Sydney. If you're new here, we get married in August, so I've been really excited to share a lot of wedding content. I just haven't had, I guess, all my ducks in a row and had everything pretty much done in, a, in an outline to give y'all in the first place. So I want to do a video now, one right before the wedding, and then also one after the wedding so that I can give you uh, any tips, I guess, if you are a bride-to-be or if you're helping someone plan a wedding, you are in someone's bridal party, whatever it might be. I love sharing my life with you. But this has been a huge part of my life and I haven't given y'all much information about the wedding So I want to dive in to wedding planning. I want to talk about bachelorette stuff Different things that we've had to make decisions on that have been really difficult and just give y'all a little inside scoop before we watch everything come to life so right when you get engaged, what do you do? Do you need a wedding planner? Where do I even begin? That was kind of where we were at. Personally, I have a little bit of regrets of not diving into it right away. And I feel, I guess, conflicting feelings about that because we also took like probably three months to really enjoy our engagement before even thinking about wedding planning. But your options are limited if you wait. So if you are thinking that you're about to be engaged or you did just get engaged, I think it's a good idea to at least figure out where you guys want to get married and what time of year you want to get married. We have a wedding planner, which I think was a really good decision, but it's not necessary if you are very on your game, organized. I knew personally that Jay's kind of like go with the flow. He's kind of like take the reins and whatever you want with the wedding, you can kind of take control on this and he'll give his two cents where it's needed. But I would say if you think that you're going to ruin your time by stressing out uh, over the wedding and you're not even going to be able to enjoy it, it's probably worth looking into a wedding planner or a day of coordinator on your wedding day. If you're not thinking that you're going to do a wedding planner or you're not going to invest in one, I think that's totally fine. A lot of wedding venues, like I know my wedding venue had day of coordinators that are just included in the venue. And also if you have great bridesmaids that have been married before, actually matter of fact, I'm the first of all my bridesmaids to have a wedding. So um, I have two married bridesmaids, but neither of them had a wedding, but a couple of them have been in weddings so that has helped a little bit. It's just kind of new for all of us. So I think that it was the best move to do a wedding planner and I've been able to really soak up the engagement season rather than stressing out too much. I will say it's kind of been decision overload and we've had to make a lot of decisions lately. <laughs> decision of where the heck we're having our wedding. I think that was our hardest part. We're like, well, how do we even begin wedding planning when we don't even know where we're having our wedding? Jay's from Florida. I'm from Michigan. We finally decided after looking at some different venues that we were going to do Northern Michigan. We went there and toured some venues all over Michigan and absolutely love the one that we chose. I do not have one single complaint. And we didn't know what time of year we were going to do other than summer. We probably would have chosen June if we could have, but Something that you'll learn throughout the wedding process is that you really have to base it off of what venue you're gonna do and what they have available because it was either we get our perfect Saturday, June wedding in 2025 when we did not want to wait until 2025 to get married. We wanted about a year engagement and we have a little over a year engagement that we decided on, but we didn't want a two year engagement, honestly. Some people like a long engagement. I personally was like, let's do this. I could even do it in under a year, honestly. So we ended up deciding on a Friday wedding because that was what was available and it's in August. Uh, there were some Sundays available, but I did not really want a Sunday. Jay was kind of like, it's up to you. He's very go with the flow. But we really prefer a Friday or a Saturday over a Sunday because then we can kind of make a long weekend of it. Personally, I would rather take a Friday off than a Monday off. And so for people traveling, they can make a long weekend of it. I know a lot of people have decided that they're gonna make a whole week out of it because it's kind of a, destination vacation type vibe and pretty much actually no one is from northern Michigan that's going to the wedding. 
We decided on a Friday because we were going to do a rehearsal dinner on Thursday night, have the wedding on Friday night. It's an evening wedding. And then on Saturday, we're gonna have kind of an optional brunch. Everyone can hang out at a lake day if you want to. And we'll be able to make a weekend out of it and actually see everyone prior. We'll have like a little welcome party with our actual wedding party and our family beforehand, which will be on Thursday night. And then on Saturday, we'll be like, okay, if we didn't get to see everyone as much as we wanted to on our wedding night, like we want to be able to focus on ourselves and have so much fun and be with our people that we can dance as much as we want and be able to actually be in the moment during our wedding rather than feeling like we have to talk as much as we can to each individual person. We'll have a little bit of flexibility there because we'll also have Saturday if people are staying in town. One thing that we had to think about while we were deciding a date was what's going on during that time. I know one of the dates was very close to 4th of July and we were like, people are probably gonna be traveling for 4th of July. Are they really gonna wanna travel the next week? Is it gonna be really busy during that time? And then there also was a weekend that they had an event going on in that city and in the city that we're having our wedding. And we basically were warned the hotel situation is a nightmare during that time. The traffic is insane and it's really hard to get into different restaurants. So people that are traveling and making a weekend out of it, it'd be hard to pretty much do anything because of the, I think maybe it's a parade. I forget what's going on. So long story short, if you're not doing a wedding planner, decide where you're gonna have your wedding, figure out which venue you're going to do in that location, and then figure out the dates that they have available. There you go. That's your start. That's as much as you can do from the very beginning. And then once you have the venue, you can kind of choose what vibe you want and you can go from there. I watched so many YouTube videos of things that people wish they did on their wedding day, wish that they didn't do on their wedding day, ways to save money for weddings. I have pretty much watched I think countless wedding videos at this point and wedding planning videos. Since Jay and I are paying for our entire wedding ourselves from the rehearsal dinner all the way through the wedding and everything in between, that has made it one, amazing that we can make our decisions without worrying about other people's opinions and what people um, should we include for the sake of like our parents. Not saying that that's a bad thing at all whatsoever, but a lot of times when you have your parents paying for it, I am imagining it becomes kind of like who they want to invite. And my parents, Jay's mom, they all were kind of like, hey, whoever you want to invite, we're not going to tell you who to invite. Like this is y'all's day, which has been amazing that we've had that. But also since we are completely paying for it ourselves, we've had to make so many decisions on what's worth splurging on and what we can save a little bit on. For example, we had to do a little pros and cons list and decide what's worth splurging on. I believe that it's worth splurging on a very good videographer. This is what I do for a living. I love videos. I love photos. So photographer and videographer, that was definitely a priority for me. Jay was like food and music. And I totally agreed. Music makes the entire thing, makes the entire experience for everyone. So we ended up deciding on a DJ and we're also having uh, like a trio. They're doing uh, live music during the ceremony and also during the cocktail hour. We have for a DJ, his name's um, DJ Casey Rush. And we were like, where do you even find a good DJ? And the most important thing that we were told was that they know the venue and that they also um, have been recommended to you from other people and people have gone to weddings that they have been DJing at. And we actually were in Chicago a couple months ago and actually what, like a month and a half ago. And my good friend Lexi, who's in our wedding, was telling us about this DJ Casey who was in Michigan as the DJ and he was the best DJ that she's ever seen at a wedding and he made the wedding. So we were like, okay, noted. So we looked into him and we were like, yeah, he seems like such a good vibe that can carry an entire reception. And personally, I want everyone dancing the entire time. So that's like a very important part of it. A few things that we were like, okay, it's not really worth spending an arm and a leg on wedding invitations and our save the dates because that was a hard decision for me. I loved our wedding invites that our wedding planner found, um, like a little independent small business, but they were really expensive. I think they were five times the amount of what we ended up spending on minted. So we just went with minted ones and they're so gorgeous. I love, I love our save the dates. We haven't even done our wedding invites quite yet, but our save the dates are 
very minimal, they're very simple, and they're fine. We love them, but I did love the idea of having ribbon on each one and very crazy save the dates and invites. At the end of the day, they're just save the dates and invites. The other thing is florals. I think there was a range that would make you fall out, and then there was also a side of the ring. I had no idea what florals cost, so that was definitely new for me, and everything seemed expensive. I'm like, for flowers for one day, like we could not wrap our head around that, and we ended up having to say we're going to go on the very low end of the range on that because we just could not imagine spending that much so there are different things that you can do we're not going to do any um, fake florals at all but I know that's an option but we are going to have it where they're bringing some of the flowers from our ceremony and bringing them into the reception to kind of get double use out of them I cannot even imagine them only being out there for what like 15 minutes of the ceremony and florals I think I will warn any bride that's going to be where you fall out of your chair and you're like is this even is this even <laughs> worth it do we do candles do we I think we're going to add some candles and some lights and stuff to kind of take a Away from less florals we're still doing a decent amount because I love the look of it and I we're going for a very neutral minimal look on florals so we don't need anything over the top but I will say that's probably the biggest shock of wedding planning a few different things that I would recommend using postable was like the best thing to get everyone's addresses they can just receive a link from you they'll fill out who their plus one is they'll fill out their address their email their phone number I think you can even have options for like their birthday and stuff. And it's been so nice to even just have all of their addresses as like my contacts because I've used them for a couple different things. Like I wanted to send flowers to someone for their birthday. And I'm like, oh, I already have their address because of our wedding invites. So Postable is a really good thing to utilize. I don't know if you can do... I think you can even like send out cards and stuff from there, but we just used it and I put everything in a spreadsheet afterwards so that we could take all of those addresses to do the save the dates and invites. We're doing a wedding website and we're going to do that through the knot. I just started doing it, so I really haven't done a ton with it, but that is in the works right now. And that's pretty much what I've been recommended every single time. Seems like a very cut and dry, easy to do your um, registry through and everything. And I love right now it has a countdown to tell us when we're getting married and how many days are left and then minted like I said we're using those for our wedding save the dates and our wedding invites but also you can do different things like I think we might do some day of um different like signage and stuff like that from there as well because you can do a lot of custom things on there mm -hmm. A few different things that I would recommend doing, getting a wedding email. So we have a wedding email that we use, it's like Jay and I's combined email, and we use it only for wedding stuff. We, everything from our honeymoon to all of the different, like even when we were just looking for a wedding planner and for venues, I started using that. And that was something I heard in one of the YouTube videos that people recommend because there's so much that goes into it and you are coordinating with so many different vendors that it can get lost easily. And if you have have a lot of different emails with work and whatnot you want to be in the right headspace when you're going into wedding planning there are a lot of different emails that will come in that you're gonna to have to put deposits on you're gonna to have to sign different contracts for different vendors and whatnot that are coming to your wedding and you kind of just want to be in a good headspace because if you're opening up your work email on Monday morning and you're already overwhelmed and then you go in and you see different stuff that you need to do for your wedding and you just it gives you a very negative mindset with wedding planning so I keep that for when I'm like in a good mood go to my and you want to have fun with this I think that's the biggest thing is that during wedding planning it can be so overwhelming if you let it be but just try and remember that this is such an important and exciting day for you too and the other things are going to work themselves out like as long as you have your venue your you have the music whatever you decide to do whether you do live music or a dj and you have like the little details figured out it's all going to come together just fine and everything might not be perfect but at the end of the day it's a day to celebrate y'all's love so i'm trying to remember that through the wedding planning because up until like six months before our wedding so we were like engaged for about seven months at this point I really had not been that stressed and then it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks and I was like we have so many things that we need to get done and I just can get really overwhelming so I would recommend doing these little things to try and minimize that. Let's chat about bridal party and also who you invite. So for bridal party I think that's a really hard decision just like your guest list. Um, it's really hard to choose out of your friends and your family who you're going to have standing up next to you. We actually dabbled in the 
idea of not having any bridesmaids and groomsmen just because it's a hard decision. And we have a lot of people that we would love to have up there and then we would have no guests because we're like, oh, we want them up there and we want them up there. And we have a lot of close friends and family members that we think would be amazing to have in our bridal party and as groomsmen and everything. So I ended up going with six bridesmaids and Jay has eight groomsmen. So we were a little bit worried about having different numbers, but it's gonna be totally fine. We'll have, what is that? One person is gonna have two people walking them down or we'll figure it out. We haven't gotten down to that. We figured it was not the end of the world if we had a different number of bridesmaids and groomsmen and we didn't want to add people or take people away simply for that reason and at the end of the day if there are people that you are super close with that have been in your life for a long time and you want to have them in your wedding party I say have them. It's going to be a big decision for the person that's going to be in your wedding because it's expensive. It's time consuming being in the wedding. So don't be offended if someone's like, I just can't take that on. But also don't feel like you have to include someone because they're a friend of a friend. It's probably going to hurt some feelings in there. And there are definitely people that I care so deeply about. And I consider a really close friend that I'm not having in my wedding, but I'm including them in the bachelorette trip or in the bridal showers and everything. We'll make sure that we're having as many people feel as loved as possible for our wedding day, but at the end of the day, it is our wedding day. As a guest list, we are having 150 people total. That's um, around how many we're inviting, so it's probably gonna be more like, what, 120, 130 people, I'm guessing give or take. I don't really know exactly how many um, people tend to say no for a destination wedding. That's going to be the, the kicker there, but that's including plus one. So when you actually think about that, it goes quickly. Like I think we probably could have done a lot more than that and included some other people, but we had to be kind of picky with who we chose. We have a venue that only holds, I think 175 people total. So that's gonna be including our um, wedding planners and makeup artists and photographer and all of that. So that goes way quicker than what we expected. Originally, we were like, maybe we're going to have only like 100 people at our wedding. And I think that this actually does feel like a small wedding. We're having to not invite people that we might have thought we would invite it, but if you haven't talked to them in a long time or you don't know the other person, like if Jay does not know them well and I don't know his people well and he's like, I haven't talked to them in a long time or I'm like, I haven't talked to them in a long time or we don't reach out to each other, that's a hard decision, but at the same time, you cannot invite everyone. You can't include everyone. So the people pleaser in me had to make some hard decisions. A few decisions that we've had to make, do we want to do a buffet style or do we want to do plated dinner? It seems like such a small thing, but we decided on a plated dinner. We really want this to feel like an experience and that kind of just elevates it a little bit. And the price difference with who we went through catering, it was not a crazy difference to kind of upgrade a little bit and do a plated dinner rather than just having like a line buffet style. Also, I have um, celiac disease and so does one of my bridesmaids. So I realized that it's very hard to accommodate everyone. And that has been hard because think about how many people have food allergies, how many people have food preferences. And that's kind of been the stressful part with a plate of dinner. So we're still trying to figure out the logistics. We go in April to figure out all of the tastings and how that's going to work. Like does someone choose prior what they want on their plate? Um, or do you kind of have like an array of everything? Do you have a thing for food allergies and all of that? We're going to have to figure that out when we go in April and we will keep you up updated on that. I'm going to do a whole separate video. Originally, I was going to include it in here, some different things that I've gotten recently for my bridal era, different dresses that I've gotten, or um, different gifts that I've gotten for my bridesmaids and whatnot. I can go into more depth on that. I did bridesmaids proposals for each girl, and I loved how that turned out. I'm super happy with that. But another thing that we have coming is that we're doing flower grandmas instead of flower girls. We had to make the decision, do we want kids at our wedding? And we ended up deciding that we're gonna do adults only. It's a nighttime wedding and at midnight, it's kind of a late one, honestly. And another thing is that would probably double our guest list if we included kids. And having it be a plated dinner, it just is a lot going on having kids. And so we are gonna offer to have some different recommended babysitters there. We haven't figured out exactly what we wanna do for childcare, but we are doing 
doing adults only. Having it be adults only, I feel very confident in that, but that's another thing that you kind of just have to be aware that you're probably gonna upset some people. So to end it all off, I guess a few tips that I have for you are to get a wedding email just for y'all's wedding and a combined email. Try and make every decision as a team, but for you girlies, I have a feeling that you guys are probably not going to be as invested and as excited as what you are for all of the details. It's a lot and it's overwhelming and guys are like, what? At least my guy is. So he's kind of like, this is a lot and there are so many decisions. So kind of just decide what you want to make as a decision together and then if they're not as invested and as crazy excited about what kind of desserts you guys are doing then don't be offended because I've kind of just realized like he's excited about it because I'm excited about it and it's our day but he would be totally okay if we just eloped that was a conversation that we definitely had and I really want to have an exciting wedding that we're surrounded by all of our people and we're able to celebrate our love but continuing to remember that it's your day and don't let the noise of different trends or different things that are, I guess, normal or traditional. You can be as non-traditional as you possibly want and as unique with your wedding because it's your day. And if you don't want to have bridesmaids or grooms in, then don't have them. If you want to make it super small and an intimate wedding, then go for it. If you want to just elope elsewhere, do whatever you truly think feels most comfortable for you in your relationship. But lean on the people that you have in your life. They are going to want to celebrate you and they're gonna to wanna to help you plan with things. My bridesmaids are like, what can we help more with? I feel like we haven't helped at all. And so I'm very thankful for that. I wanna do a whole video talking more about the bachelorette trip, bachelorette planning, all of the different outfit inspo and different theme type things. I just wanted to kind of start this off with a very simple, um, here's where I'm at with planning, here's kind of my inspo with stuff. And I think I'll have to do some more updated videos closer to the wedding to give you guys some more insight and whatever questions you guys have. So if you do have any questions uh, additional to this, then definitely let me know. I've loved sharing throughout this video and I hope this is helpful even in the slightest. If you are a bride, bride-to-be, or you think you might be a bride here soon, congratulations. It's such an exciting, special time and I'm loving it. I don't want it to end, <laughs> but I am excited to get married. I'm excited to start that new season in my life, but I'm like, I just want to like dig my heels a little bit and slow down because it can go quickly. So I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.